What is up, Janksters? It's your boy, Graham, also known as HamHawks42 on the internet. And today we have another edition of the Overthinking MTG podcast. And this one uh, started out in a way that many of these episodes start out with me on scryfall.com, clicking the random button until I saw something that I thought was interesting. And today it presented me with a card from Ice Age, which uh, I personally have never played with, but I gotta say, it's kind of interesting. It's not good, but part of the reason I find it interesting is because it's not good. It has an A aged well. And cards that haven't aged well oftentimes tell us a little something about Magic's history. So the card in question is Aurox. Now Aurox is a 2-3 summon Aurox for 3 and a green. With Trample, when attacking, Aurox gets plus 1 plus 0 for each other Aurox that attacks. So if you have one Aurox by itself, you spend 4 mana for it, you have a 2-3 Trampler. It attacks, it's a 2-3 Trampler. Okay, fine. If you have an additional Aurox, and they both attack, instead of being two threes, they're each three threes. Mm, okay, it's a little better. Is that worth an eight mana investment? Absolutely not, not even close. But, um, you know, you see how it kind of starts to synergize. Cool, if you have three Aurox that are able to attack, which, again, cost 12 mana, way too much to be reasonable, but all of a sudden, they're each attacking as four threes with Trample. So, okay, now we're starting to get somewhere, and there are also three of them, note. You get another one, five threes, etc. So if you have a big army of these, then that ability can scale in an interesting way. So by today's standards, if you wanted to break this card, which could be fun for like a casual commander kind of situation, I would, you would definitely want to do clone effects. You would want some kind of way to like copy this over and over and over and over and over again and then swing out with it. Like this were like a mirror march kind of situation could be really cool where mirror march creates like a you know you flip coins and then depending on the number of successes you get you get additional copies which is pretty fun um that that's pretty cool <laughs> so that could be neat you know you could do some cool things with that um but at the end of the day like the mana investment is really what kills this thing and the interesting part about it the, the, when i was doing a little bit of research for this just trying to get a, get a handle of like what is this card the other thing I found really interesting, though, is um, other Arax. You know, the, the first thing I thought is, like, well, if there's a whole... Tr like, if, th if this is a creature type that is supported, then all of a sudden, this kind of effect could be really cool because you can build an entire deck with, like, where all your creatures are Arax, and maybe they're, like, little 1-1 one -one Arax for one, or, like, you know, little Araxes at lower mana values, and maybe this is your finisher. Then all of a sudden, okay, that could that could work. There's the, the, We're on to something here um, that... that could be an interesting setup like and so maybe i'd be looking at doing an arox you know uh commander deck or something like who knows that could be fun and there are changelings but like with all creature type centric effects i i personally like to dismiss changeling when i'm changelings when i'm analyzing just how good that effect is although if i were to actually build a deck i probably would incorporate changelings because they're in a you know they're they're usually pretty efficient they're they're cheap and they help you know creature types like this get some love in any event i looked it up uh this was originally printed in ice age and when it was originally printed our ox here they were the only our ox this was it this was the only card that was our ox so by today's rules you can only have four cards of a given type in your deck unless the card specifically says otherwise so that l presents a problem you know at best at the absolute best case scenario assuming you draw a very statistically unlikely set of, you know, sequence of, of cards, or you do some weird shenanigans to tutor for them, you get four of these on the field. That's it. That's the best. And so each one of them attacking would be, what, a 5-3 with Trample? You could print a 5-3 with Trample right now for four. With no caveats whatsoever, that card would not be good enough. To, to see any meaningful play in any environment. Like, as a four drop, three toughness, mm -mm, get it out of here. It's not gonna, there, there, there's one drop removal that gets rid of it. it. You know, in cards like Strangle, in standard, you can't, you know, it, it wouldn't be good enough. And that's the best case scenario with Arox. Absolute best. Now, this was printed back in Ice Age. This was like 25 years ago, or something crazy like that. It's not fair to compare Arox to today's standards. It's not, 100%. <laughs> um, but from a mechanical perspective, the other thing that I find really fascinating is when Ice Age was printed, if I'm not mistaken, the four of rule didn't exist yet. So you could put as many Aurochs in your deck as you had. 
you know, as many as you wanted. You can load up your deck. So I could literally sit down across the table from me with a deck that was like 22 lands and 38 Arox. Now, I wouldn't be doing anything for the first three turns, which is a, which is a bummer for sure. But And when I hit turn four, I'm dropping a 2-3, which, you know, Lightning Bolt was a thing back then. So even then, it's probably not going to survive. But if the deck goes unchecked long enough, if I survive long enough, it could snowball in a way that I don't know if that was common for decks back then. Now, I genuinely don't. I, I didn't play with, uh, you know, I wasn't playing back then. So, you know, it leads me to believe that, like, that is a strategy that just might have worked. Even then, it might have been a little slow. But the fact that when you have one down, it's relatively small. But the moment you have another, it gets bigger. And that also, that one gets bigger. And then the next one gets bigger. And, you know, the, the, it could grow in a cool way. So I think this card is kind of neat. Now, when Wizards printed the sequel to Ice Age, so Ice Age was one of the very early expansions. It was in the first, I believe it was the first year or two after Magic came out, but very, very early. Um, they printed a successor to it. They printed kind of a sequel, if you will, in 2006 called Cold Snap. And in Cold Snap, they actually printed three new Arox. And they are different, to say the least. And uh, so, and oddly enough, I don't believe they actually reprinted the original Arox. Although, oh no, they did uh, in in one of the theme decks. Excellent. I'm glad to see that. Anyway, I just looked. <laughs> sorry, I was just looking that up. Uh, but they did print a couple of new Arox in Arox Herd, which is a bigger one. Not that that not that we needed one that was bigger, but it's a four four trampler for six. But when it enters the battlefield, search your library for an Arox card, reveal it, put it into your hand, and then shuffle. And then whenever Arox Herd attacks, gives plus one plus zero until end of turn for each other attacking Arox. So it has that attack trigger, just like the original. Uh, but this also helps you find another one. So it literally helps you find the next one. And if that other one is an Arox Herd. You can drop that out of the battlefield, grab another Arox herd. You get the idea, right? So what they did was they took Arox and helped it find its the you know the additional copies, so to help you just snowball, which makes a lot of sense. Granted, you're still going to four four trampler for six. It's like, I feel like flavorfully this fixes kind of the fault of the original card. However, we have the same problem. It, you're spending six mana, and the the end result not quite worth it. Juice isn't worth the squeeze, so to speak. Uh, they also printed Bull Arox, which is a 2-1 trampler for one and a green with the same ability. Whenever it attacks, plus one plus zero for each other attacking Arox. Now we're talking. We have cheap ones at the early part of the curve. Granted, this one is pretty fragile with only one toughness. It can die relatively easily, but it sets the tempo. It sets the, the tone and it gets some early damage because what the, what Arox is trying to do is be aggressive, right? But it doesn't start till turn four. So this helps kind of get in, get ahead of that a little bit at least. Um, and then there's one other one, Rhymehorn Arox, which is four and a green for three, three trample. Whenever it attacks, it gets plus one plus zero until end of turn for each other attacking Arox. And you can pay two and a snow, target creature blocks, target creature this turn if able. So you can actually assign blockers. So that's a removal effectively by allowing, you know, by, by you as the attacker getting some agency over combat, which is something that you don't see very often. And so frankly, uh, Rhymehorn Arox actually in, um, in Commander, in certain like Gruul or Naya Commander decks that are very combat focused, this could be really good if, you, if you're rocking snow. Anyway, if you're not rocking snow, this doesn't work, unfortunately. But if you are, Kind of a cool, cool design. I like it. So of all of them, I got to say, I think Rhymehorn Arox is kind of the most interesting design. Uh, it also has the same attack trigger, by the way. But uh, I mean, three, three for five, probably still not worth the, worth it. But at the end of the day, like I thought this card was really cool because it's a creature type that is very narrow, but it also has a payoff mechanic built around its creature type, which is not something you see every day. So I, I thought that was especially neat. I, d I just like the idea of this. Um, that said, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, it'd be re I'd be remiss um, if I didn't mention it. A card that would actually synergize with this beautifully. I mentioned it earlier. So I mentioned copy effects earlier. And uh, one that just came to mind, I would love to go wide in a token-based strategy that is Simic or some combination that includes green-blue with Aurochs or one of the Auroxes that we looked at today alongside 
Echoing Equation. Echoing Equation is a sorcery from Strixhaven. Three blue blue. Two star creature you control. Each other creature you control becomes a copy of it until end of turn. Except those creatures aren't legendary if the chosen creature is legendary. The reason I would like to do that is because if I draw like an Avenger of Zendikar or a Rabble Rousing or something that can produce just an obscene number of tokens and then Echoing Equation by Arox and attack with the whole squad. If all of them get plus one plus zero for each other attacking Aroxes, it's kind of a little build your own crater hoof behemoth. And I think that's fun. <laughs> is it good? Nah, just get crater hoof behemoth. But is it a fun idea? Absolutely. So I gotta say, I think Arox is a cool card. It got the juices flowing in a neat way. That, and that's that's it. That's the only real reason I wanted to talk about it today. There's no, like, it isn't tied to any new upcoming releases. I mean, it's from Ice Age, and it's the middle of December as I record this, and there's a big cold snap going all over the place everywhere. So, I mean, it's cold, Ice Age. That makes sense, right? Anyway. Thank you so much for checking out the video or listening to this on uh, your podcast app of choice. I appreciate it very, very much, and I'll catch you on the next one.